Thank you for joining me. Now, Parliament on Wednesday deferred debate on the Jogata Investigative uh, Committee report into allegations uh, of bribery against some members of the Appointments Committee. Uh, the highly anticipated report had been laid by the chairman of the five-member committee and the speaker had notified the House about the impending debate only for it to be scuttled later. Members need to be set to pour through the 50-page document. And I guess because it concerns all of us, we could then take the motion um, relating to that tomorrow. Very well. We shall uh, postpone that tomorrow according because I saw the Honorable Minister leave. Therefore, I was wondering. Motion number 22 will be adjourned till tomorrow. Now, Majority Leader Saitre Mensah Bonsu further explained the debate was deferred uh, to allow MPs to better analyze it. I don't want us to hurry through and people will begin to say that, oh, such a huge document. Uh, we do not even afford members the opportunity to go through documents. So that is what is intended to be done. Um, it's be distributed and members will have the opportunity to peruse it thoroughly and tomorrow when we come to dealing with that, then we know that we've done a thorough job. Yeah. I, I have no inkling about what is contained in it as of yet, but when it's distributed, I have my copy. I also want to go through its entirety and be able to contribute in a very meaningful way. Yeah. Given the huge public interest in this matter, couldn't the report, for instance, have been made available to members yesterday before today? You should know you should know the processes in Parliament. You should lay it first before you avail it to members. You want to deal with an inverse proportion. I don't know why you are doing that. It's first laid, and once it's laid, it's distributed to members. You can't distribute before, you know, laying it, lay the document on the floor. It's not done. Something is taking forever, and you know we give deadlines as to when we hope to have it out, and then we shift it by a day or two. The publication of the report, yeah, it, as in it's taking too much time. But what thirty days? Initially, you should ask whether it is thirty working days or thirty calendar days. You don't. You are not even probing that. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Committee, Joe Gatti, tells Joe News the delay is well-intentioned. That one, that, one, that one, what has happened is very simple. Today we leave the paper, and tomorrow, first thing in the morning, um, we'll present the report itself. You know that Parliament, you first have to leave the paper. After you leave the paper, then you present the report. How come this delay, some would call it, because we, we know that you're given four weeks initially, but um, it's taking well, like it's one additional month. It's a matter that we'll be addressing, and I don't want to telegraph my point. So that then you'll be seeking retrospective approval for the extension? Is that well, the point? I don't know. I've practiced for, well, I think, close to 30 years, and there are ways in which you do these things, and I don't want to telegraph my point. Well, can we Let's see what God will do tomorrow. What well, can we expect from the report itself? Because something that the image of Parliament has been tarnished, you know, so much thanks to these allegations. I can tell you one thing we can expect for sure. Your name is not in the report. It's a guess name in it. No, I said your name was me. Well, it's been a day after these comments were made by Chairman of the Investigative Committee, Joe Gatte, and uh, the Majority Leader in Parliament, uh, Oseche Mensabonsu. But this morning, my colleague Joseph Apukugapo has been speaking to some members of Parliament who say they've still not received their copies of the report. Important milestone in the life of this parliament, the seventh parliament. Um, the respected uh, Aaron Quay has shown a certain trait and a certain attitude. He wants to open a new chapter in terms of uh, governance from parliament. And so I am happy that a committee was formed in the first place. And uh, parliament, for once, should purge itself of all these uh, unending allegations of corruption. So it's, it's important, but 
Um, having seen it, I can't say much about it unless I see what, what is in the report. But I can't wait to read what the report is. And then we can make our own deductions from what the report says. You know? I'll, I'll get back to you in a while. But Ras, um, several hours after I was laid, the fact that it's still not out there, um, from what you have been told, is the report ready or probably something else has been done? From what members of parliament have been told, the report is ready, um, except that, as you may be aware, business in the house dragged a bit yesterday, and um, they also wanted to make copies available to uh, the honorable members of parliament to be able to peruse and be able to make a meaningful contribution to it. But let's not forget, and let's not gloss over the issues. This is a particular issue that has dented the image and credibility of parliament so badly. And um, in that score, we all want to purge ourselves of this image of corruption within Parliament. And, and certainly, I am very confident that um, the report will be thorough. I'm very confident that it would bring a finality and a closure to all this debate about um, um, uh, bribery within, within Parliament. And don't forget, um, Issues of bribery have gone on not just within Parliament, not just within the executive. We've seen instances in the judiciary, in the police service, and many other places. And these things have um, dented the image of public institutions to the extent that there's currently a complete collapse of trust in politicians and public office holders that we all have a duty to purge ourselves of these um, 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 image of corruption. Standard on, on that bit, do, do you agree with that suggestion that uh, Parliament's image has been so very badly dented thanks to this bribery allegation? And do you think the House would ever be able to recover from this? Well, I will not say that it's badly dented. Uh, it's affected. Our image has been affected. That cannot be gainsaid and cannot be doubted. Uh, and it's not just Parliament, just as he uh, intimated. Other institutions of state and uh, other arms of government uh, have come under allegations of uh, corruption. So it was so important. That is why I said it was a milestone achievement. At least uh, we never slept over it. Um, uh, the Speaker of Parliament shown a session leadership and the committee was formed. So far, it's been good. Uh, public, uh, it's been made public. I mean, there was a public sitting, uh, open to the public, open to the media. That was important. I think, uh, you know, we've started something very good. The public should, should, should congratulate us for this effort. What is important is that I just hope and pray that what we saw, the presentations and what we saw at the, at the public sitting, will translate into the report. Nothing, nothing significant will be compromised. We need to know the truth and all the truth thereof so that for once, as he intimated, we can purge ourselves. But it's so, so important. I am particularly happy because I, I was feeling uneasy about the whole matter. And so we've started, well, we, we, we are on a, a rifle lane. Let's lay the report, and then we'll take it from there. My final question will be on that bit about um, ensuring that everything that transfer, you know, transpired at the committee sitting is what we see in the report. Following the laying of the report yesterday and um, the delay, some civil society groups are already uh, raising concerns about this and speculating, you know, that this may raise suspicions of someone wanting to temper with the outcome of the report. It's like we've still not seen it hours after uh, Joe Gatti indicated the committee's report was ready and all of that. What do you say to that? Well, it's reasonable for anybody to raise those doubts because of the importance attached to the allegation and how the concern the whole public uh, has shown about it. So I will not fault anybody who has issues with the delay. But I will also not be quick to draw a conclusion and say that the delay is tantamount to certain uh, compromise or untoward doings being done to the report. Let's see. Um, I wouldn't want to hazard any guess. But I can assure you that we will let the public know what the truth is if the truth is not revealed in the report. Because it's not just about Parliament as an institution, which is very critical for our democracy, also about our individual reputations. So, trust us, we'll do a good job. I'm grateful. Many thanks for speaking to us. Honorable Frank Cannot Dumpe. Final word. Well, uh... so that's uh, Joseph Opoku Gapo coming from Parliament uh, with some MPs sharing the view 
on this matter that is getting rather controversial. And so um, let's speak to Joseph again on the latest on, on this matter. First, it, it had to do with a number of days uh, that had been spent uh, investigating this matter. Now it's about whether the paper that was laid yesterday is actually ready. And uh, hello, Joseph, if you can hear me, uh, what's happening with this issue? Because now there's conflicting reports uh, in the media that uh, the report is actually not ready. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the chairman of the investigative committee says he laid it before the House yesterday. What's happening? If you're dead, and um, if you had some of the entries that I spoke to, they rightly indicated that rightly indicated that um, as far as they are concerned, the report is ready. Um, per the parliamentary procedure, you can't lay a report which is not ready. So when the Honorable Jogate indicated on the floor of parliament yesterday that he was laying the report, then of course the expectation is that the report would be ready. Um, there are a lot of speculations going around as to how come we are seeing this current situation. You would know that this committee's report had delayed by well about three weeks and eventually as the public pressure mounted, uh, Parliament issued a statement indicating that on March 29, which was yesterday, the report was going to be out. Uh, the, 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 speculation, the speculation is that just probably is the public pressure that pushed uh, the committee to go ahead and indicate yesterday that they were done with the work and the report was ready, but it may actually not have been ready because following the laying of the report, one expectation was that it would move, be moved to the printing department for copies of it to be run and handed over to various members of parliament. But as you heard in our interaction with the MPs, the said document has actually not been taken over to the printing department for the printing out and subsequent distribution to MPs. We've heard uh, you know, all that details emerging that members of the committee have been meeting with leadership on the draft report late last night and even this morning to come to a final conclusion on what the full report itself should be. And so we're still waiting for that particular outcome. But the, the indication is that just maybe um, when the report was laid on the floor yesterday, just maybe it may not have been ready. And it's now that the necessary finishing touches are being put. But I look forward to see what will happen on the floor of parliament itself, whether the debate on it will start after copies are made available to MPs and the public generally. All right, and Joseph, you spoke to some MPs earlier and we heard some of them share their concerns, but generally, what's the mood in Parliament over this issue? The MPs I spoke to rightly indicated that everyone is anxiously um, awaiting the outcome of this particular report. Um, one other issue that's been of concern is that uh, you know, following the laying of the report and the concern that is delayed, it was expected that by now the details would have been out. The Honorable Frank Anodon, in the very latter part of the interview we did with him, admitted that uh, you know, still holding on to the report, even up until this juncture when it's expected that it should be out, could raise some concerns about people wanting to temper with the outcome of the report. And so the, the MPs are also generally anxious, awaiting for the full publication of this. They describe this as a milestone in the life of Ghana's parliament because it will be an opportunity for everyone to get into the full details of these whole allegations that have been made over and over again that parliament and other institutions are corrupt organizations and all of that. They think that this particular report will help bring some finality to you know, that particular claim. And so they are all expectant and anxious and are waiting for the publication of the full details of that particular report. All right, uh, Joseph, our interview has been interrupted uh, occasionally by a uh, chiming bell. Can you just uh, help us for those who are not familiar with uh, Parliament and how it works, what that bell is actually for and what will happen on the floor of Parliament today? Uh, so um, it's, it's past 10 o'clock. The sitting of Parliament is supposed to start at exactly 10 o'clock. And so um, following the, the, the passage of that particular time, the sitting hasn't started yet, but throughout Parliament, when uh, efforts are being made to call members of Parliament in to come and undertake the business of the House, it's that bell which is actually used. So it rings throughout the corridors of Parliament. So that's why you're hearing in the background. And uh, MPs are being asked to move in as soon as possible immediately so that then procedures can actually begin. Um, a few items are on the agenda for today. The House is still considering the estimates, the budget estimates for various uh, ministries, departments, and agencies. One of the estimates that we're expecting on the floor today is that of the 
Electoral Commission. Again, we're expecting that the appointment committee's report when it comes to um, some of the deputy ministerial nominees would also be coming to the floor. And then at the very latter part of the day, it's expected that as and when the full report when it comes to the Joe Gatti committee's uh, you know, um, investigation is ready, that would also be laid on the floor. There will be a debate on it. We're expecting that there will be contributions on the recommendations of the report from various members of parliament. After that, we will hear addresses from both the majority and the minority leader on what they make about this particular report. And then on the final bit, the speaker will direct that the necessary recommendations that has been made in the report going forward should be acted on by parliament as a whole. And then uh, you know, he'll give directives on what the way forward should be beyond the publication of the report. Thank you very much uh, for those updates. Joseph Apuku Gapo, my colleague, coming to us live from Parliament, uh, telling us what to expect from Parliament today. Away from the House, a lead economist with the African Development Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, is set to take over as new Bank of Ghana governor. It follows the decision uh, by the current governor, Dr. Abdul Nashar and Nashiru Isaku, to formally step down from next month. Although not quite usual, the governor is said to have resigned over personal issues and reports of friction with the current government. Okay, so uh, well, we'll be bringing you more updates on this. And uh, George, we have the editor with Joy Business, uh, will be telling us some more and what to expect uh, with this particular development. Hello, George. Thank Hi, you Minister. for joining me. It's good to see you. Good to see you also. And let's talk about uh, the, the decision uh, by Dr. Abdul uh, Isaku to resign. Mm. Why this time? And uh, can you give us more details about what you've picked up? Well, uh, are there uh, any internal uh, ramblings? Well, some would say, was this a matter of time as in when this will take place? Whether he is going to resign or <coughs> this current administration would ask him to move on. Mm. And it looks like it took the other way of him personally resigning and he's saying that it is for personal reasons or on personal grounds. But when you want to feed into the rumor mail, uh, the, the concern was that uh, this administration wasn't giving the necessary cooperation and support as a governor to work. We're even picking up information that uh, economic management meetings went on and he was not invited. And so that cooperation, that role that the governor is supposed to play when it comes to the monetary space, uh, that cooperation was not there. And obviously, it made it difficult for him to work. And that is where it looks like this arrangement, uh, this decision has been taken. Also, from the other side, and sources close to Kaben, they thought that there was some serious development at the Bank of Ghana, uh, which they thought that it would be difficult to work with him going forward. And maybe that could have influenced uh, uh, this attitude or posture towards him as a governor of the Bank of Ghana. Mm. So when, when should we expect a formal announcement on the new Well, we are uh, just hearing that uh, it should be coming out very, very soon. The Council of State is supposed to consider uh, some of these appointments. Again, what we are also picking up is that there could be three governors being appointed at this time. So not only the top governor, but even the two deputies as well. And this is information that we are also picking up. So maybe express some three persons being named as uh, governors, being the, the top governor, uh, first deputy, and even second deputy. And also these are information in the uh, news making run in the room of Milan. If the Council of State is supposed to consider all these appointments, it could take a while. But before the close of today, something should come up from the presidency on who is the new governor of the Bank of Ghana. And possibly, and I'll say possibly, his two deputies as well. All right. So tell us more about Dr. Addison. Who is he? Well, he's worked at the Bank of Ghana. He was, until he moved to work at the African Development Bank, he was the director of research and uh, served for quite a long while. He also worked with the West African Monetary Zone as well as an economist before he moved to the African Development Bank as a lead economist there uh, to work with them. That is from 2011 uh, to date as an economist for that particular institute. Mm. All right, I'll uh, have you pause here for a while. I have more questions for you. But let's speak uh, to an economist and head of department of uh, economics at the University of Ghana, Professor Peter Korte. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us on News Desk. Good morning. Good morning to your viewers and listeners. All right, uh, Professor Corte, let's let's talk about it. Let's start the conversation from here. Uh, has this ever happened before? Have we had? Uh, I mean, in recent times, have we had a governor resigning, having to resign uh, like this? Yeah, we 
saw Dr. Wampa resign, um, I think, late last year. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, um, if my memory serves me right, uh, this is not the first time this has happened. Mm. Uh, but but in, in Dr. Wampa's case, if my memory serves me right, it had to do with uh, he reaching his retirement age and uh, having an extension of contract, and then he decided uh, at some point to resign. But uh, with uh, Dr. Isahaku's case, uh, it seems to be a different development. Yes, um, you may say it's a different development. But one thing you know is that the bank has been in existence for quite a long time. Mm. They have the necessary structure in place. So um, I think they've been operating for quite a, a, a long while. And, and this practice has worked out very well, at least in the past decade or, or more. So um, I, I don't see this as a, a major something that would bring a major shock to the economy. Mm. Um, besides, um, Dr. Itaku is a smart guy. Um, certainly, he has thought through what he uh, has done and has therefore put in the nurses in place to ensure that this exit of transition wouldn't bring any temporary to, to the economy. Mm. Um, to also ask is that he has two strong deputies who are also equally, who equally work with him. Mm. Well, so I believe uh, they can uh, handle the situation while uh, he's away. But I, I also hope that the gap will be filled smoothly or quickly. From what I'm hearing, uh, well, what is being rumored, uh, Dr. Addison, he's also an equally smart economist. Mm. I have known him uh, since the early 2000s when he was the head of the research department. I have read his, some of his papers and interacted with him. Uh, so I believe um, we're going to have a very smooth transition. Uh, this is not likely to affect the economy in any major way. All right. Uh, uh, Professor Korte, you say that it won't affect uh, the economy in any major way, but uh, let's focus about on, on why he resigned. According to him, he did it on personal grounds, but we are picking information that there was some form of friction between him and the current administration in the sense that uh, there were certain high-profile meetings where he was expected to attend, but uh, was not invited. Uh, does this in any way politicize the institution? Well, it, it's something that we, we have to um, grow out of in, in our economy, uh, the politicization of our central bank. I believe that's why we have an act that ensures that the uh, bank has independence. So the central bank will have the independence, the governor, the board, members, etc. Uh, it's a human institution, I must say, and we live in a political uh, environment. But it is something we have to try and grow out as we are democracy, we deepen our democracy. Um, what you're saying is something that is being rumored. Um, I, I personally haven't spoken with him or heard from him to confirm what you're saying. So I will uh, be very cautious in commenting on that. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if there, there was some uh, friction um, within the system. Well, why do you say you wouldn't be surprised? Isn't it, isn't it possible for a, a governor that was appointed or a governor who was appointed uh, by an opposition administration to work uh, with the other? Yeah, we have this, this notion that once somebody is appointed by one particular administration, then that person is totally aligned to that administration. It's, it's something that we need to grow out of. So that is why I'm saying that I wouldn't be too surprised. But that thinking is there, that suspicion it's always been there uh, that you would certainly work uh, to the advantage of whoever appointed you. And we've, we've seen this happen in other sectors in, of our economy. But I believe going forward, we should move away from this and, and have independent-minded uh, people, uh, whoever appoints you, whether the current administration or previous administration, people should be allowed to work professionally. Thank you very much for your time. I just spoke to uh, an economist and head of my, my pleasure. Department of, Econ of Economics.
at the University of Ghana, Professor Peter Corti. Let me come back to you, George, now. Uh, we've spoken to him. He's, uh, well, I could call him uh, someone who has interest mm. in, in this. Th there was one question I wanted you to ask him. Is he also being considered? Because Peter Corti's name has come up in previous instances. Uh, oh, really? As, uh, <laughs> as a governor. And uh, uh, if that news that time. if there could be two deputies also being appointed, maybe. E exactly what I wanted to ask, because you said that we are likely to have uh, Dr. Addison declared with two other deputies. That is again what we are picking up. Then. Well, it could, we are picking it, it up. Could, it so could come to pass or it might not come okay, to pass. So okay, so then it, in, in such a case, what happens to the existing deputies? One of them is due for retirement. Okay. So that will be very soon. We also hear that it's only the substantive governor's position that is more of, has a tenure of security. So for the deputies, tomorrow you can be asked to or be assigned to a different position. Mm. So that is what we are picking up that could be the rationale behind throwing three new governors to be um, at the Bank of God. It could be two or it might end up uh, being four. Mm. Uh, uh, how are industry players reacting to this? I think that for a lot of people, it was expected that something would happen. Mm. But it was what time and what form would it be? Is government going to ask him to step aside or he himself would say for personal reasons, I want to move on. So for all the industry players, for those who matter in the industry, they were expecting it. It's the time that they were surprised. But for some of them, they were saying that, well, it was coming. Mm. They saw it coming. They saw it coming. Mm. But just that we, we didn't know in which form yeah. it will come. Let's talk about his achievements, Dr. Isao Kwaini. Uh, well, I will, one I can really remember is the, the new commemorative <laughs> <laughs> five CD note. But, I mean, you, you follow the industry keenly. Let's talk about major achievements of major Dr. Achievement. I think the, the recent stability of the Ghana City could be seen as one of some things that he's done. There have been lots of reforms that have been taking place at the Bank of Ghana. The depositors' bill, in terms of getting the legal back in itself, trying to push for the Bank of Ghana's independence as well, the new banking act and the banking law and all those things. There have been several reforms that have been taking place at the Bank of Ghana, which he worked closely because he was then the deputy as well, and he came on as a substantive uh, governor, and he also worked on it. So mm. some I see that for those reforms that were aimed at uh, building a strong Bank of Ghana and also building a strong banking system, uh, he might have contributed to that one. Mm. Now you talk about the positives, but let's uh, highlight a bit of the minuses. The biggest, I mean, I can't remember, has to do with the it's Swiss, it's it's Swiss it's gold uh, watches, is it? It was one, uh, but it was about the fact that what we also got from him was that there was something that was institutionalized. So it was about whether mm. you stop it So it's not or peculiar to, his to him. But at the end of the day, being a head of an institution, you take the blame. Mm. Uh, accounting and continuing business and continuing. Whether it's bad, you take it, if it's good, you also take it. So that could be as a, a law on how it was handled as well. Also, the Ghana City, until before it stabilized, it, 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 they had some own problems as well. And uh, how he was able to really check Gamma when it comes to expenditure by insisting that he would not approve certain checks. And or some could also say that could be a law on his part. Mm. Uh, so obviously, uh, we're going to be seeing a, a new signature on our notes. But it, it, it depends it if for the next uh, four years that that person might be in office and that there wouldn't be any a need to issue new currency. Yeah, Don't but, forget but, that but you know, the existing you currencies already have signatures already. Yes, I know. But, 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 but George, you know, in four years, is mm. it likely to happen that we'll have any new well, currencies? I mean, well, you can issued? never say has never. Has it ever happened four years? Uh, I, I, I never say never, Ben. Well, but has it ever happened before? I, I don't think I can recollect. Well, so it's possible. It we could, could be. Seeing that. It could happen. Yes. But let's talk about the impact on, on the currency. We spoke to uh, Professor Kolcha about the impact on the economy at large. But uh, is this going to have uh, create any problems uh, for, for someone sitting at home saying, well, the Bank of Ghana uh, uh, governor resigned. But I mean, I think you want to look at me? how the institutional investors will react to this. And for those who trade in our bonds and what was Nashiru Isaku doing? Was he spearheading any reforms that people saw it as being so good for the Bank of Ghana, and even the Ghana city, or something else? So you want to look at how these investors in our bonds are going to react on the daily trade. Sweet trading has opened, actually, and we'll be following the market to see what could be the response. Also, the Ghana city as well, it was stabilizing. Are people afraid that whoever will come in? That is why people might say that as soon as possible, put someone in place.
because if you if you leave that space too Open wide and for, for too time. long then there's room for speculations and mm. the government is not sure who is coming is that person disciplined is that person not disciplined when you leave room for speculations that's when that could hit badly the currency and even our bonds as well but if what we are hearing and these are reliable sources that Addison is coming in is jetting in all of that things we need to should be in town this weekend then it looks like that should settle the market and know that somebody is coming in knowing where he's worked anybody who's followed developments at the bank of ghana being at the research department a very solid man of course so maybe the negatives or the positives will far with the negatives and therefore the impact on our ghana city and even our long dated bonds uh, might be minimal all right thank you very much george we are uh, it's nice to be on your program thank you for coming uh, well that'll be it uh, as we settle this conversation on the resignation of Dr. Isako as the governor of the Bank of Ghana. We are picking information that Dr. Addison could take his place. Well, we'll be bringing you more updates as and when they are available and also let you know what he's likely uh, to bring on board. That is, if he's the one going to take Dr. Isako's place. You're watching Joy News Desk with me, Benis Abubed. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring you more stories. Please stay with us.